All right, Year 10, welcome to our first screencast for 2017. And um, I'll explain a little about how this is going to work in class, but essentially going to be setting you some, um, uh, some lessons um, via YouTube, uh, such as I'm doing now, so that we can spend more time in class doing problems um, and, and uh, just doing the actual work rather than me standing out the front lecturing. So uh, I certainly um, will, be, will be using this a fair bit just to explain some concepts and do some things that don't really need a lot of interaction and then we can talk about and discuss them in class when I, when I see you. So we've, um, we've done exercise 1A. I missed the first class and I apologise for that. I had some middle school stuff to do, some Barwon stuff. But um, uh, in, in that, I think uh, you were set, that was exercise uh, 1A, and that was just a review of, a review of algebra. Um, now, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that exercise went okay. You know, looking at things like like terms, uh, by review, we're talking about things that have been covered before, like terms, expanding brackets, and maybe a bit of factorizing, and things like this. These are, these are important skills, and skills that we need to draw on that's that's why we touched on them in the review. Anyway, um, if you have any problems with these areas, then please ask the question and, and I'll help you out. We're going to move on today with um, algebraic fractions. We're going to just do, just do a bunch of examples and just see how um, how we work with algebraic fractions. So, it, yeah, these these tend to be. Um, I mean, no one really likes when I say no one, um, other than the the sort of the the weird maths nerdy people like me enjoy necessarily fractions because they're a bit clunky. You know how do you um, uh, how do you simplify, for instance, eight a squared b over two a? I mean that's you know, th this sort of thing. We'll, we'll look at how to simplify a couple of types of uh, just here's a fraction. Now simplify it because that's what we do with fractions sometimes, isn't it? Simplify just means make simpler. Now what you know if I give you if I say simplify if I just whacked in a a little five over uh, fifteen here, then simplifying would I think you'd probably look at that and go, yeah, that's equal to one third. But what you're what you're doing there is you're finding a common factor. A common factor here is is five, and then what you're doing is dividing top and bottom by that common factor. So you're dividing by the common factor, which in this case is five. So you end up with one over three. Right? That is what simplifying is, and that's all we're going to do here. We're going to identify common factors. Um, and we're going to divide by them. So when it comes to a mixture of numbers, and right, this is 8a squared b, and this is 2a. Now written another way, that's 8aab. You don't often see it like that, but all right, um, you'll get the idea of what I'm what I'm trying to explain here. 8 and 2 have a common factor, don't they? Yes, they do. That's 2. So we divide the 8 by 2, and we do a lot of crossing crossing out and reducing this way. Now there's an a there and there's an a there, and we can divide both by a, and they both become ones. We're not going to write one because that's, that doesn't make much sense. Now we're finished. We've got one underneath, and we've got 4ab on top. So the result is just 4ab, and that's our simpler, simplified version. We're not changing the value of it. We're just writing it in a simpler way. Now if we have a look at this second fraction here, well, uh, do you, what do you think? Now we've got one, two terms on top and one underneath. Now in order to, to do this, uh, to simplify this, to find a common factor, the common factor has to go through all three terms. And in this case, we can see, yeah, look, do you reckon there's a three in here? There's no common algebra, but there's a common numerical factor of three. So what I can do is I can go divide that by three, divide that by three, divide that by three. And we end up with just one minus three x, and it's simplified. Okay, another way of doing this, and some might, and we might get around to doing a bit more of this later, is to factorize the, num the, the um, numerator, in this case, as 1 minus 3x. So 3 outside of 1 minus 3x, we took out the common factor of 3. Right, if you expand that, you get back to 3 minus 9x over 3. And then you just go, get rid of that, get rid of that. 3 is a common factor, and we're left with 1 minus 3x. Equally good, but you might use this technique a little bit later. OK, um, looking now at a multiplication example. So we're going to now do it's still simplifying. But we're going to write it as um, 2 over a times, and these are just examples out of the textbook. I'm not being too creative here, but I'm just looking to work through a couple of examples, things you've probably done maybe a little bit before, to go through a technique, and when we get into class, we'll practice it. Now, what we do here is, we again, we look for common factors right, in order to simplify. Now, uh, rather than like 2 and a, there's no common factors there, but we don't just have to... 
we, we can do a cross check not just with the A, so it's any numerator and any denominator. So I can check the 2 with the A, nothing. The 2 with the 4, oh yeah. 2 goes into both those. All right, and I can pair up like this. A goes with A, yes, but please don't cross those two out and say divide by A, divide by A, because this 2 is being left out. And you can't just take a bit of the numerator and leave the other part. I'll give you an example. If I give you 3 plus 1 over 3, you know that that's 4 thirds, right? You know that that's the answer. That's, that's correct, 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 correct. But if I do this, oh my goodness, what have I got? I've got 1. So that's wrong. You can't just pick off. It's got to go into all three. So our result here, we've done all the factorising we can now. So now we just multiply across 1 times a plus 2. So what we've done there, oh, I'm struggling here with the, um, I'm pressing on something I shouldn't be, 8 plus a plus 2 on top, and I've got 2 underneath. And that is the simplified answer. So the trick there was to pick out pairs of, of one numerator with one denominator, find a common factor, and reduce. And then once you've done that, just multiply out. All right, let's do another one, and except this time, this we're going to be looking at a division, which perhaps you know, I hope you know, division is just like multiplication. We turn it straight into a multiplication. So see how I'm writing this divided by x minus 2 and 6? I'm straight away going to say, all right, forget that. I'm going to turn this into times, turn that into a multiplication, and then this flips, doesn't it? So it's 6 over x minus 2. Right, this fraction stays the same, but the fraction we're dividing by turns into a the reciprocal. It's called the reciprocal when you flip a fraction up the other way. All right, now let's have a look. Common factors. Yes, 3 and 6. I've got 1, 3 there, and 2, 3 there. Now what about here? 2x minus 4 and x minus 2. I don't know. Is, do we have a common factor there? It's a bit harder to see. We're going to use this technique up here that I talked about, where we looked where we factorise the numerator. So 2x minus 4, I can factorise that. Let's do it. Because then it becomes really much easier to see what my common factors are. And you'll see now, look at this, x minus 2 in brackets there, x minus 2. That's a common factor. And we can just remove it. And you take great joy in doing that, because what that does is it simplifies it. And you also know you've just done something right. 2 times 2 is 4 over 1 times, this is just a 1 here. So this is 4 over 1. I'm not going to write 4 over 1. I'm just going to write 4. So look at that. That became 4, that fraction there. Okay, um, let's have a look at another example. This time we're going to do an, a subtraction. So these are all simplifiers. So I'm not writing this every time, but we're simplifying. You know that in um, algebra you're either simplifying it or you're solving it. And now these are all, these are all simplifiers because we've got nothing to solve. You need an equation sign to solve. These are just expressions. Right, so this is a simplifier. Now we're subtracting these, subtracting these. What happens when you want to subtract fractions? Well, okay, you might remember that, you know, if, if back to the bad old days of when you had to add up fractions like this without a calculator, you had to remember you had to get a common denominator, didn't you? And that common denominator was the lowest common multiple of these two numbers here, these these existing denominators, these, these, these different denominators, 2 and 3. But I can get 2 up to 6. And I can get 3 up to 6. That's the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3. But um, what I've done there is I've tripled the denominator, so I'm going to triple the numerator. I've doubled the denominator, so I'm going to double the numerator. And I'm left with 3, 6 plus 4, 6, which is 7 over 6. All right? 3 plus 4, 7 over 6. We're going to do the same here. What's a common denominator of 4 and 2? So I look for the lowest common multiple of 4 and 2, and we arrive at 4, don't we? The 4 doesn't have to move. But the a, the 2 is doubled to 4, so the a doubles to 2a. All right, we didn't do anything with the 4, so it's just still 3 quarters. Now we just put our numerator together, put it over the 4 in a single fraction, and that is a simplified job well done. Okay, let's have a look at one more. This is, a, this is an addition. It's going to be 2 over 5. Again, I'm just taking these out of the book, so if you want to have a look at how they do it as well, all right, then you can do so. Look at this. 5 and A, what's our common denominator here? What did I just say about, what do we use? We use the lowest common multiple. Now when there's some algebra involved, just multiply the numbers, the number and their, and their letter together. So 5A, right, that's a always going to be our lowest, or most often, our lowest common multiple. So 5A, 5A. All right, so what have we done to the 
to this fraction, to the denominator, we've times by a, so we do the same to the numerator. What have we done to this one? The denominator has been multiplied by 5, so I do the same to the top. Now I've got the common denominator, I just put my numerators together in a single fraction like so. And we are done. Alright, I'm up to 10 minutes. Have I got time to do one more example? I hope so. Okay, um, let's have a look at this. This is the, the toughest one here. Simplify. This says x plus 3 over 2 plus x minus 2 over 5. What are we going to do? Our numerator, our, sorry, our common denominator, we have to get a common denominator, is going to be our lowest common multiple, which I agree is 10. So what have I done to the denominator? I've times by 5. So do the same with the numerator times. I'll, I'll leave that job for later. This has been doubled, so I double the top. All right, now I expand that numerator out. 5x plus 15 plus 2x minus 4 all over 10. See what happened there? Expand, expand, and you guessed it. We're going to bring in a little collection of like terms here. 5x plus 2x is 7x. 15 minus 4 is 11. 7x plus 11 over 10 is the simplest solution there. I've kind of rushed through that. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to work through that. I want you to think about what I did, all those steps. And when we get into class on Thursday, we'll be working through exercise 1B from the work requirements that I emailed to you. That starts on page 12. Um, and we'll get plenty of practice in class. I'll see you then.